us pay with cards, tap or enter our card information online, it seems we see less and less physical bills and coins, but is it a good thing? Joining me now with his take, our money guy, Bruce Celery. Hello. 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 Do. So let's talk about this. What is what is the cashless society? Doesn't it sound ominous? It's yes. like a movie preview. In a world where robots ruled the earth, there was a place where coins went to die. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. It's actually our future. Sweden says it will be cashless by 2023. No four cash. years. It's four years. The reason I thought we should talk about this is I went into a local coffee shop last week and the, there was a sign saying, no cash. And I'm happy to pay with my card, but I was shocked that that mm. option was being taken away from me. And there's lots of technology out there. I mean, things that people know, credit, debit, Apple Pay, and new things coming from places like Facebook. But still, yes. it's like, what, no cash? So what's the rationale? Well, at the coffee shop, they said a couple things. First, safety for me, because I don't have to carry it for them, because okay. they don't have to walk to the bank. True. Ease, they don't have to count it, and therefore they can spend more time serving customers. And yes. also hygiene. Now, oh. they did not mention, yeah, hygiene, because oh. germs, whatever. Yeah. They did not mention cost, which I think is really what it boils down to for okay. businesses, is it reduces friction, it makes it cheaper. Uh, no cash is a very, very common thing in Sweden. You go to a store and it's just no cash, there's no cash. So it is a bit cheaper to run that way, huh? It is cheaper. For, for business, that's a huge benefit, right? Okay. There's less friction in the economy. Okay. For our society, the benefits are things like less money laundering, less weapons sales, right? Mm. Less tax evasion because mm -hmm. all of it's trackable. And for consumers, the big benefit is it's easier. You can leave the house with your phone. I mean, who would go anywhere without their phone? Right. But as long as you've got your phone and you've got some sort of app on there that allows you to pay, you're yes. good to go. You don't need anything else. Well, you might need lip, like a little I lip. I might want, have, want a you little You want to have a little lip. Yes. A lip. Yeah, for I don't sure. Need lip. But then that in my phone, and that's it. Yeah, that's I'm all good. you need. Okay, what are the pros and cons of cashless? So those are kind of the pros. The big con that I worry about for consumers is it removes the pain of spending. It which sure we does. have talked about. I went on this store. I was prepping for this trip, and I had to go to a store to buy a raincoat, shoes, and a shirt. Yes. Which is like a pretty big purchase. And I'm traipsing around the store like Julie Andrews in Sound of Music. <laughs> like, these are a few of my favorite things. I need whiskers <laughs> on kittens and warble and mittens. I'll just have all that stuff. Which is not responsible, but that's right. how it is. And we're like, boop, it's magic. I just got that, and I'm taking it home. Yes. The data says that when we pay with credit, we are more impulsive. We spend more on unhealthy things, mm -hmm. and we have a lower emotion. They're nodding out there. Mm -hmm. They're all nodding. Mm -hmm. We have a lower emotional attachment to what we bought with credit, so mm. we don't feel like it is ours as much. And that's a really big issue. That's a really big question mark for consumers. I'm scrolling through Amazon when I get home, and someone will, and, and and the kids will say something like, oh, I need a bathing suit. Hold on. Let me get <laughs> yeah. you a bathing suit. Bing. One click. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't, and it's I there don't before feel, dinner in your house. And it's there before dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not feeling the pain of it. So I can see why that would be a concern. So is a cashless society, is, gonna, is it going to cost us more or is it going to cost us less? At this point, we don't know. So debit has a lower interchange fee than credit, so retailers yes. are more keen on the debit front. But we don't know. Once we do this full conversion, mm -hmm. will they start to jack up the rates? I don't know. So remember when mm -hmm. Netflix was like $9? Yes. Now I think it's $1,000 a month. <laughs> and nobody cares. It's going Because what, are you going to cancel Netflix? Like, no. Thousand dollars, I'm like, fine. Take it from my veins. Take it from my veins. I have to have it. So once we make this conversion, what's it going to be like? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, we're going to be like sheep, and we're just going to follow along. Uh -huh. So let's talk about what we can do to to help ourselves yes. then in this cashless society. Number one is save first. Yeah. So automate your savings. What we want is no friction on savings. It just happens like magic. Well, yes. Julie Andrews in Mary Poppins instead yes. of Sound of Music. It's just like yes. another film. film reference. Uh, but then you just spend the leftover. So whatever is left over you can spend, but all the savings are automated. Yep. Second thing is use credit, not debit. And not just because of the interchange use debit, fees. Not use credit. debit, not yeah. credit. That's right. Use debit, not credit, because you can't, uh, you, you'll run out of money, right? If you keep yes. debiting, your money will disappear. Whereas with credit, they're like, the bank will call you and be like, we see you're close to your limit. Want an increase in your limit? <laughs> <laughs> so use debit, not credit, because uh, it feels like constrained resources. And third is be vigilant. You really have to be vigilant. I signed up for one of those uh, apps on my phone. Yeah. So I get notifications every time money is spent. 
oh. on my card or in my account, which is kind of funny because we have a Dennis and I have a family credit card. Yes. So sometimes I'll get these notifications for money he has spent. Ooh, like, oh, yes. you got a burrito. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. You use the credit card. You use the credit card oh, for that. That's I, interesting. Use your debit card. So I think what Cashless Society provides is yeah. a huge opportunity for business, for society, for consumers, but also some real risks. Yes. We do a terrible job managing our credit now, yes. and it is going to get much, much worse. This is not a message that you will hear from the financial services industry. They're all talking about this as a great idea, but there are cons. There's also one other thing that I think is, it's not relevant to the majority of the population, but yeah. to a segment, it is hugely relevant, and that is they're unbanked or underbanked. They're mm -hmm. people who don't have a bank account because um, you know maybe they're on social assistance, they don't have government ID. There's mm -hmm. lots of reasons why people can't participate in the regular financial services as offered to most of us. And in, an, in the absence of cash, a panhandler will not be able to receive anything because no one has anything in their wallet. Yep. And even if they did, they wouldn't be able to go spend it at a coffee shop. Very interesting. Yep. And I, that is the first thing I thought about. Yep. No giving change to anyone. No, no cash for my kids' field trips. Like, yep. all all of that is becoming a lot more difficult and I just think but on the one token, things are becoming more difficult, and the other token, they're come, they're just too easy. Yeah, too things easy. are too easy too now. Easy. So you're just spending all over yeah. the place and doing things you shouldn't be doing and not yeah. thinking about it. 